Deep in the jungles of Ecuador lies a tribe of natives called the Hurani. The Hurani people are known for their skill in hunting as well as their simple and primitive lifestyle within the Amazon forest of Ecuador. The secluded nature of their world made it so that the Hurani people lacked exposure to any modern civilization. Though the date of their establishment is undetermined, it is known that they have been within the Amazons for centuries. They have become very accustomed to their isolationism and did not take kindly to outsiders, often killing them. The tribe has seen minimal outside contact, but in the late 1940s, a petroleum company attempted to drill for oil on their land and were killed. This started many bad interactions with the outside world and the Huanari. Numbering approximately 1,300 people, the Horani were given the crude nickname, the Alka, which, when translated, roughly means savages. But to truly understand the Horani people, we must turn back the clock and understand the life of a young boy named Jim Elliott. Jim was born in Portland, Oregon to Fred and Clara Elliott, alongside three siblings. Jim was raised in a firm Christian family and at a young age was well acquainted with God's Word. During his high school years, Jim participated in many extracurriculars such as wrestling, school newspaper, acting, and public speaking. He had a determined spirit and excelled in all the things that he worked hard for. In his teenage years, Jim and many of his Christian friends loved to attend missionary projects and training camps. Through this, tr through this time, Jim found a passion and calling from God to serve beyond his hometown of Portland. Jim especially found passion to preach to the Hispanic community in South America. Jim and his partners got a call from God and decided to travel into the Ecuadorian jungle. In the 1920s, most missionaries weren't too enthusiastic with the outreach to the unknown tribes in the dangerous Amazon forest. However, this did not change Jim's mind. Understandably, recent events in history eroded the trust that many had with outsiders. Events like the Boxer Rebellion in the early 1900s, where Chinese people killed over 200 white missionaries, led many to have a fear of foreigners. The First World War also spread distrust among different ethnic groups, and the fear of foreigners for white people and missionaries was a legitimate concern. However, for Jim, nothing could stop him from sharing God's word. Jim Elliott and his friends Ed McCauley, Pete Fleming, Nate Saint, and Roger Udarian all went to Ecuador in hopes of reaching out to the Harani people and sharing with them the gospel. There was little known about the Harani. What, what little was known about the people was that they were violent and had killed any foreigners on their land. This fear did not stop Jim and his men. The men had found one of the locations of the tribe's huts and they planned to fly a plane down a nearby area of land to the Amazon River that would become their makeshift landing strip. The men would send down gifts from their plane in a basket and shout out short Huanari phrases down at the huts as a sign of peace and friendliness. This tactic eventually worked as the tribe would put in gifts of their own in the basket and send it back to the missionaries. To Jim, this only further confirmed the facts that the stories about the tribes weren't true and that at heart, the Huanari people were kind and misunderstood. The group set camp on January 6, 1956. Jim and his friends were shouting basic Harani phrases into the jungle to see if they could attract any of the people. A man and two women then appeared on the opposite side of the riverbank at around 11.15 a.m. and joined the missionaries' camp. The missionaries gave the women and men gifts which made the Harani people relax. They started to converse freely with them. On January 8th, Jim and his friends were waiting for a larger group of Harani people to arrive sometime in the afternoon. They saw a large group of Harani people walk towards the beach. Jim excitedly contacted his wife, letting her know that they were going to make contact with the tribe again. Jim and the missionaries were attacked by the tribesmen and were killed. While they had guns within their plane, the missionaries refused to shoot any of their attackers, knowing that they did not yet know God and their anger was not their fault. 
because they were attacked on the river, one of the four bodies floated downriver and was never recovered. The death of Jim Elliott, Ed McCooley, Pete Fleming, Nate Saint, and Roger Udarian was a tragic shock to everyone. For many, this was further evidence that the Huanari people were savage and could not be brought to Christ. However, Elizabeth, mourning her husband's death, did not let this defeat her from sharing God's word with the Huanari. Her love for God pushed her to return to the tribe only two years later. The Huarani were hunters and gatherers, mainly relying on their spears and blowguns to hunt their meat. The people were animists, believing that everything, the earth, animals, even objects, possessed a spirit. Their knowledge of botanical medicines was very uh, extensive, being experienced with poisons and hallucinogens. Elizabeth also taught the Hurani and helped educate their children with a written system for their language that she made herself. Elizabeth also helped translate the Bible into that written language. Originally, the Hurani people's language, commonly known as Sibella, was completely oral and did not share any real similarities with other common Hispanic languages like Spanish and Portuguese. This posed a problem when it came to reading and understanding literature like the Bible. Elizabeth Elliot saw this as a problem and decided to create a written system for them. The Harani people were taught this written system and were educated by Elizabeth herself and taught how to read and write. Elizabeth also helped to translate the entire New Testament of the Bible into Sabellia. Because, the, because of this, the Hurani people could understand God's word, which led many to Christianity. Elizabeth would return to the United States and spend the rest of her life advocating for the missions in foreign land and the education for people like the Huanari, who weren't fortunate enough to be exposed to modern civilization. Elizabeth Elliot died on June 15, 2015. Her death was detrimental to everyone around the world. Her actions and the sacrifices of Jim and the other missionaries brought an entire people group into the eyes of the world and helped nurture and educate them. No longer will they be known as a savage group of tribesmen who kill any foreigner they see but as a friendly people group with a rich and vibrant culture. No longer will they be recognized by their nickname, the Alka, but by their real name, the Harani. Alright, like ready? I want to make the text bigger or something. Good. <coughs> That's fine. I'm slightly blind, do you see? My brain is not braining.